All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the preview and waiver wire discussion and all that other wonderful stuff. Just some minor news and stuff, and trust me, if you're a Jets fan, it is minor news. That's why I didn't do a big video yesterday on this. Uh, first off, the matchups for today, we've got Columbus and St. Louis. That one starts in uh, roughly an hour and a half, or no, uh, two and a half hours' time. Um, Calgary is in against the Winnipeg Jets. Tonight, uh, Pittsburgh's playing Detroit, and Minnesota's playing against Colorado. Pittsburgh's playing against a, a roster which really... Pittsburgh's using a roster which really looks like the one they had yesterday. A couple more regulars in the lineup, but basically a lot of guys who are trying to get jobs are going to get another audition. Um, and, and Winnipeg uh, news is that Ross Levick's going to be on the line with Brian Little. So Ross Levick's moving up the lineup. He is one of the guys that I think that with line A and Connor being out could absolutely benefit from this and could score some points. And I'm still keeping an eye on whether or not Vasilainen's going to make it. Uh, the Jets did suspend Bufflin for not reporting to camp. They do this for cap reasons, for paperwork reasons. Uh, believe me, uh, if Dustin Bufflin comes to them today and says, all right, I'm, I'm good, I've cleared my head, I'm ready to come back and play, uh, suspension lifted, back in you go, and no worries. So it's it's only a paperwork move. Trust me that this is not a sign that there's some kind of a nasty uh, relationship between the team and the player and that the team's trying to move on or anything. It's just since he's not in camp, they've suspended him. He is under contract, so you're supposed to be at camp. Uh, so again, not really a whole lot to see here right now and, and no updates on whether or not he's going to come back and play this year or if he's going to actually call it quits. Um, among the cuts today, uh, Taylor Rallet Radish and Boris Kachuk are cut by the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, Scott Wedgwood's on waivers. I apologize to Scott Wedgwood. I mentioned yesterday that he hadn't been put on waivers yet. Today he was. So, whoops. Uh, so that'll take it down to McElhinney. And, uh, and of course, Vasilevsky is the goaltenders for Tampa, to the surprise of no one. Um, Chicago kind of surprised me by waving Sakura already, but Chicago's got a lot of forwards. And Lankinen's among the cuts as well. Um, during the summer, of course, there was some, some talk about Lankinen after the World Championships, where he performed very well. But, again, he's not really in Chicago's plans right now in terms of their goaltending. Um, Ottawa kind of surprised me a little bit. Uh, formatting, Virano being cut, doesn't necessarily surprise me because they have a lot of forwards. I'm a little bit surprised, surprised I should say, by, by Lajoie being uh, cut by the Ottawa Senators, but this time of year, it is easier to cut somebody who you don't have to send through waivers. Speaking of waivers, uh, Andrew Hammond, the Hamburglar, is on waivers again. Uh, this is kind of an annual thing, and uh, Andrew Hammond, when he was signed by Buffalo, I, I didn't really talk about it and didn't really make a big deal, and there were people who were like, hey, Hammond was signed by Buffalo, why aren't you talking about it? And this is kind of why. I, you know, Hammond's not going to end up pushing a, a, one of the top two guys out of a job. Olmark and Hutton are, are up here. Hammond just is not, and that's the reason why I didn't see it as, as really a big deal. Uh, J.F. Baruby is waived by the Philadelphia Flyers, as well as another goaltender. Uh, a lot of goalies. And Canuck fans may be interested to know, Derek Pouliot is on waivers currently. Philip Holm is on waivers with Chicago as well. So, um, yeah, Pouliot, it looks like, is going to be sent down to the American League. And that doesn't necessarily 100% surprise me, especially considering the depth on the blue line that St. Louis has. I do hope Derek gets this game together and, and has a good run here at some point. Um, and just the last little tidbit, and these are all tidbits of information, not really a whole lot of news going on because we're still waiting on the RFAs. And you get the feeling that if there were any trades that were maybe relying on RFAs signing during the summer, those have probably all been put on the shelf for now. Um, Spezza, Goche, and more. Looks like that's going to be the fourth line for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, which would definitely mean that for guys who are, you know, fighting for roster spots, that may very well be uh, what you have to break up right there. Um, the top nine's pretty set in Toronto, so that being the fourth line, be interesting to see how that works out. The idea is simple. 
um, in situations where um, faceoffs now can be on either side of the ice at the the, the demand of, of of the team that's um, deciding where that faceoff is going to go, and this is in icing situations and um, situations with with the start of penalties and whatnot. Spets and Goche, they can both play center. So if it's on the left side, one takes the face off. If it's on the right side, the other takes the face off. So the way that they're playing it is either of them can be center on that line. And Mike Babcock said he likes that. And when you like something, that's it. It's set in stone. So for right now, I would say that's that's probably something they're going to toy with for the rest of camp and for the rest of preseason. And we'll see if on October 2nd, that's how things are in that fourth line. But that's how it's shaping up right now for Toronto. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just tap it upon this video. And hey, thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. And I'll talk to you again soon.